that wow. ubiquitous as SpongeBob is wow. and has been the show for oh, yeah. for 20 years and just conquer the whole world and you know dozens of languages dozens of countries there's always somebody every day that's turning on spongebob for the first time there's always some kid or some person who goes you know i've seen the stuff in the stores but i never really watched the show and you know as channel said it's funny it's funny you know there's people that are in 2019 just running across squidward and spongebob and mr Krabs for the first time and that's that that's really cool. I liken it to to the blues. The blues is a very simple uh, musical form, but with infinite variety of uh, possibilities. And our characters, you, if you watch the first two episodes or three episodes where everybody's introduced finally, you don't have to be reintroduced to them anymore. And but there's still variety there for what they can do. Everybody has these wonderful range of things they can do within being sarcastic or being optimistic or being money grubbing uh, like like crabs. You know. So wow, I never thought of that metaphor before and it's perfect yeah. I'm so stealing it no, go, go ahead yeah that, no I, I, I'm gonna do that you know a wise man once said that Spongebob is a lot like the blues it really is <laughs> it, it's where the blues meets the yellows it, it's it's uh, that you're right it's like a Chuck Berry song or something where it's you know it's it's, it's just a one four five one, progression four, five. but there's like a hundred great Chuck Berry songs, you know, and they all have that same progression, but they're all different in their own shading. Having the well-defined characters, but also having like the universe uh, bikini bottom that's so weird. It's sort of that the, the combination of those two elements. They just allow you to go into so many different places. people and places. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's funny, it's funny, like, like I think for any comedy that's successful. Is it pretty much comes down to characters, you know, characters, characters, characters. It's not so much what they do, it's who they are. And then you laugh at what they do because you know who they are and them doing that. You know what I mean? It's like it's like their their personalities come first on this show and and, and the characters come first and the you know, the archetypes come first. And then you know they're funny because you know that you know like when you watch whatever like like the honeymooners or something you know old sitcom yeah you know where you where you all you know th that thing that norton's doing is gonna drive ralph Crampton crazy oh he's going crazy you know and then we, it's, it's it delivers we use that too when ever so often when uh sponge and and squidward have a one-on-one -on -one sort of thing it is a very much a honeymooners thing because he does this something uh, to to the point of abstraction then then i finally i will explode and go all right you know, kind of thing. <laughs> Squid, squidward holding it in holding it in holding it in exploding that's that never gets old for me. The key to retaining SpongeBob's optimism? Yeah. Well, you know, it's kind of baked into SpongeBob as a character, and I think part of it is because that was baked into Steve Hillenburg as a creator, and maybe uh, somewhat baked into me as a person as well, which might be why Steve cast me to some degree. But, um, you know, as, as uh, the slings and arrows of outrageous uh, fortune buffet you around, you know, you got to work harder to hang on to your inner SpongeBob. And I have to say that, you know, playing a character that's so determinedly positive has, has uh, rubbed off on me in, in a good way. So. And my sarcasm was not really baked into me. It was mostly poached. Yeah. You know, uh, broiled. Over easy. Bro over easy, yeah. A little, little hollandaise sauce in there. You know, and then, but it, it tastes okay. I do have neighbors like that, and uh, Mark is one of them. <laughs> yeah, Mar Mark Ceccarelli, our, uh, our uh, senior, uh, junior executive uh, producer in charge of cartoonage. Yes. I just made up a job title for him. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Hopefully, Vice I'm president in charge of certain things. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Co-executive producer. Yeah. Like that's it. When if we ever do get annoyed with our characters, we're dead. You know, we yes. we love our characters. Uh, it's, it's it's just something we're so grateful for our characters. So it's it's never never an annoyance whatsoever. Yeah, that's really a good point. I got to say, everybody on the show, everybody in the cast, really does have. Uh, great affection and a protective proprietary interest in their particular character and every actor on the show really is 
uniquely suited to play the character they play. And Steve Hillenberg's vision of, of casting who he cast for these characters is yet another example of just like how uh, hyper evolved he was. Like, I, I don't know how he did or, or achieved half of what he did. You know, they're, they're, mm-hmm. each character really exists as their own archetype you know and but by the same token it's really simple like 13 seasons like you said but you could watch a brand new episode of spongebob that just dropped last week and know everything you need to know about these characters it's not like you you know it's not like some big uh, binge watch thing that, uh, 13 seasons i don't have time to uh, forget it i'm not watching any of it i'm done yeah you can you can watch a new spongebob and you go okay the hopeful guy the dumb the dim bulb friend the crabby neighbor the guy, okay i got this and you know there's always a it's an easy on-ramp onto spongebob and <laughs> there are no logic rules. Remember, n- n- fish walk around. They have buses. They have grills. Yeah. Hey, you know what? There was no fire in SpongeBob until we decided we wanted to do a camping episode. Then it's like, well, you have to have a campfire. Yeah, but they're underwater. Nah, who cares? Who cares? <laughs> we're not. We're not about. We don't need no stinky reality. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know. Hey, man, how come? How come the Flintstones can watch a fight on television, but they don't have internal combustion engines in their cars? They don't have running water. They have to use a Mastodon's trunk, but they can watch TV at the bar. And how come Gilligan's Island can make a coconut foam, but they can't fix the darn hole in the boat? (laughs) (laughs) Perks of this job is that when you come to events like this, people come up to you and just tell you uh, how, you know, what SpongeBob has meant to them and just, or or odd ways that SpongeBob has come into their life, you know, uh, usually extremely positive ways. And, uh, And then occasionally very sick ways but uh oh yes but it's uh it's like i, I can never unhear that but uh <laughs> but yeah oh i'm sure we're, there's a whole lot of new stories waiting to uh come into our ear holes over the next few days this is a game of thrones gaff here <laughs> <laughs> have you noticed the coffee cup in this scene <laughs> yeah I love, it. <laughs> I love it. All during the interview, it's a coffee cup. Oh yeah. I'd never even thought of that. <laughs>